May, very good evening to you. Thank you for being with us. So, 50 years now of Earth Day, how do we begin to measure just what has been achieved so far? Look, uh, you know, environmentally, I think we have to uh, step back a little bit and acknowledge the fact that the COVID-19 pandemic is in itself a human tragedy and that we have to take every precaution possible to make sure that we, we honor lockdown and we keep our people safe. I think it's, it's been hugely important for us to also see the leadership of our state president and cabinet who have put the lives of people ahead of just about anything else. Of course, there are lots of pressures then on, on these decisions to, to, to be different, uh, for the economy to be opened up. But I think we can learn a lot of lessons. So we understand that uh, a healthy environment is essential for human health and well-being. And this pandemic then illustrates that we should, in our planning going forward, acknowledge this fact. Any stimulus uh, measure post-COVID-19 should focus on, on building resilience and sustainability going forward. And our constitution and the sustainable development goals, which guide uh, sustainable uh, economic and environmental practices across the world, has to protect us in future from shocks, including climate change. So we cannot go forward with, with business as usual. Uh, we've learned from previous uh, uh, financial shocks that it doesn't take uh, a year or two before we really getting back and pumping out those greenhouse gas emissions like we not, uh, unmatched previously. And that just takes us to the next crisis. Uh -huh. And so we've got to make sure that we build in resilience into our thinking and planning into the future. I'll come back to resilience in a moment, Monet, but this coronavirus pandemic has had a devastating human cost. But a lot of environmentalists saying what it's offered is a much needed reset for the environment. Do you agree that this is that much needed reset moment? I think uh, not a reset in terms of what is uh, required uh, on a sustainable basis, but certainly a reset of mindset. I don't think that at any time of human history, uh, certainly since industrialization, has the whole world got to a point where it's managed to sit down and reflect because we've been given time to, to look at things very, very differently, mm -hmm. to put people first. And I think that's the signal we got from our leadership in South Africa is that people come first, then we look at the economy. And what I'm arguing for is that when we come out of this and we stimulate the economy again, we must make sure that it takes cognizance of what's in our South African constitution in relation to sustainability, the environment, and what each Af South African citizen should experience. And you touched on this briefly, the, the benefits as far as greenhouse emissions, for example, are concerned, are likely to be temporary because at some point factories will reopen, there'll be more cars on the road, planes in the sky. But how do we, in fact, let me rephrase that, is it too soon to measure the benefits as far as carbon emissions and maybe trying to repair some of the damage in the global warming conversation? I think we've got to understand that we've got to decarbonize our economy, uh, and that applies to many economies across the world, but particularly South Africa and, and, and some other developing economies and developed economies. And we've got to make sure that we don't continue on the pathway that's brought us here. I'm not linking that necessarily to, to this pandemic, because the pandemic is something that has just given us pause for reflection. It's a, it's, a, it's a very nasty and tragic way to get there. But I do think that it gives us uh, the opportunity to plan the transition towards a low carbon future. That means more renewable energy, less burning of carbon, coal, oil, and um, uh, fossil fuels in general. All right, Mornay Duplessis, thank you so much for being on ENCA tonight.